Welcome in, everyone, to this Friday edition of the Pack-A-Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. A little bit more of a somber episode than I was certainly expected on an NFC Championship week. Of course, the passing of Packers general manager Ted Thompson has kind of caught everyone by surprise. I'm going to discuss that more in just a moment. I did want to get to a couple other pieces of news and notes before I kind of go over my thoughts on Ted Thompson and his passing and his legacy with Green Bay, um, which is all, you know, very important and probably nothing I'm going to be able to do justice in a 10 to 15 minute video, but I did want to go over a few of my thoughts today. Before I do get to that, first of all, Tremont Williams does, of course, officially sign with the Packers. He signs to the practice squad, not to the active roster. Um, That does leave open that open position potentially for Jared Valdir if he is healthy enough in time for the game where they can activate him off the COVID list and put him back on the roster. Um, Of course, he does practice on, um, on Thursday as well. So that's a good sign. We have no idea yet if Tremont will be activated for the game, uh, but he will be able to be if Green Bay wants him to. I kind of expect him to at this point. I don't think you bring him in with the idea of him just sitting on the bench. I don't think that makes a ton of sense. So my guess is he does get activated for Sunday, but uh, he does officially get moved to the practice squad and he does officially get number 38 as well, which was taken, I believe, by Mike Weber, uh, the running back on the practice squad. Sounds like he changed his number so that Tremont could get number 38, uh, which it's just amazing to see him in that number 38 running around on the practice field again. So that is finalized. Also, um, Olivia Reiner uh, caught uh, a few transactions yesterday that I didn't get to and didn't see, uh, but uh, James Burgess, KB Anento, and Perry Nickerson, uh, an exa- <laughs> a who's who of uh, Packers on the injured list, uh, actually were all you know uh, designated to return by the Packers from injured reserve. Again, James Burgess, linebacker, KB Nento, and Perry Nickerson, cornerbacks. Um, remember, Ento made the active roster out of training camp, but then they immediately placed him on IR. Uh, but that does mean he's eligible to return at some point, which Green Bay now opens that window. Perry Nickerson was signed a little bit later in the season. I think he was claimed, if I remember correctly, very early in the season. I believe he played one game on special teams, went out right away, and has been out ever since. James Burgess, uh, similar type of situation. They get him midseason. He suffers an injury and has been on IR ever since. All three uh, eligible to practice. And I think that's kind of the key thing here. I would be somewhat surprised if any of the three actually end up on the active roster, um, certainly this week. Um, and even if Green Bay does make the Super Bowl, um, if I'd be surprised if they get activated on the roster. Barring an injury, um, I think it's fairly unlikely. But this does give Green Bay a couple things. One, all you know, especially Nickerson and Ento are younger players. Um, Ento is still under contract for next year, I believe. Um, so this is going to give them an opportunity to get some practice reps that they would not have uh, had otherwise. Um, activating them or opening the window for them and, and you know allowing them to practice does not add them to the active roster at this point. They are still on IR and it opens up a three-week window. So there's no downside in doing this. There's only three weeks left in the season. Uh, obviously two you know game weeks and then three actual weeks because there's the, the buy-in between the championship game and the Super Bowl. But there's no downside in doing this. So if they're if they can practice or even get out there in some of the walkthroughs, um, it's a benefit to them as as players. And um, you know it, it you know if you, all of a sudden you need them because of an injury uh, to to a player, a corner gets hurt or something, a linebacker gets hurt, um, they get a few extra reps. Um, so that helps you there, and it also gives you some more bodies for for you know scout team and things like that. So. There's no downside in making these moves and activating them and letting them practice and getting some reps, but it would be it would be somewhat surprising if any of the three actually got activated at any time still this season. Um, one other note, Antonio Brown did not practice on Thursday, and it sounds like he's going to be an official game time decision. Um, certainly look for his injury designation uh, today on Friday and uh, see what Tampa Bay lists him at. But uh, he has not been practicing and he will, again, officially have a, a you know game time decision. So likely a questionable designation would be my guess. But we will see on Friday. That would be a big loss for Tampa Bay. Uh, Tom Brady's been certainly looking his way quite a bit. Um, of course, they're still stacked at wide receiver even without Antonio Brown, but I actually like the matchups on the outside. Kevin King matches up well with Evans 
and Godwin being a, a physical, you know, more physical, taller receiver on the outside. Um, you know, King usually struggles with more shifty wide receivers that can kind of, you know, run great routes and get to the inside, not taking anything away from Evans or Godwin. They can certainly do some of that as well, but I think King can match up. And of course, Jair can match up with just about anyone. So um, Antonio Brown being out in this game could, you know, if that were the case, would definitely be uh, something that would be noteworthy. And, you know, I guess if you want to put it this way, beneficial for Green Bay, hoping he can play again. You, well, maybe Antonio Brown, not so much. He's had an interest, interesting last few seasons, but you always want teams at their best at this point in the season. All right, let's talk some Ted Thompson. There's a lot to kind of go over here. I think the first thing that I want to touch base on is just the outpouring of, of support and love and thoughts from everywhere. And I mean everywhere. Current players, previous players, scouts, NFL uh, executives, GMs across the league, former coaches, Mike McCarthy, Aaron Rodgers, uh, media members. Jason Wilde put out a great article and had a great interview that you know on Wilde and Tausch that he put out that I definitely recommend listening to and you know reading Jason's article as well. Um, Gil Brandt, NFL.com, had a great story on Ted Thompson, and there was just this outpouring from everywhere. And you can tell sometimes the the genuine outpouring of support that comes out for certain individuals. It was readily apparent for Ted that it was genuine, it was real, it was authentic. I never got to interview Ted. That was before my time of you know certainly being credentialed or really covering the Packers in that type of capacity. I never got to interview Ted. Never got to ask him a, a question. Never met him. Anything like that. But. Um, you know, for me, you know, certainly he's obviously had a major impact on the Packers. I, I think he's one of the greatest evaluators of talent um, that's come across the league ever. I, I think his ability to find players like Aaron Rodgers and Nick Collins and Clay Matthews, and you know the players that's been all over the internet, all over every article that's been written, the players that he's been able to find. Um, I always equated what Ted did to trying to build a program, not building a team for the here and now. He was looking at like a 10 to 20 year program for Green Bay, a team that could consistently compete year in and year out. And if you remember, you know, things had just fallen apart quite a bit in the, the Mike Sherman era and, uh, and what he tried to do by bringing in, you know, free agents and trading for players and um, Joe, the Joe Johnsons and the Terry Glens and drafting uh, Jamal Reynolds and there was a, a litany of mistakes and he came in and he righted the ship right away and he had a vision and he had a philosophy and he had a goal and he had all of it baked in for what he wanted this Packers franchise to be. And it started with, you know, Packer people and, and bringing in the right people of the organization that were going to affect the locker room in a positive way. Um, and then obviously identifying top end talent and keeping that talent in Green Bay. It was, it, he was never satisfied with, you know, trying to find and, and, and develop and bring in new talent. I think Brian Brahm's a great example of that. It didn't work out, but he just drafted a first round quarterback in Aaron Rodgers and immediately goes out and grabs a second rounder in Brian Brahm because he, he didn't care where the depth chart was. He didn't care um, who was there, who was established. He wanted consistent competition. He wanted, if somebody went down, there was somebody ready to step up and take his place. He was looking at it almost like a college program where you've got players that are coming in, they're good people, you're building a system around them. And then um, if somebody leaves, you're getting a compensatory pick for them. And already you've got somebody on the roster who's ready to take their spot. Um, and it worked for a long time. And we can have the conversation about maybe not doing enough in free agency or trades uh, another day. But his overall vision shaped the roster and it still has shaped the roster up until this point. That's one of the things that's so devastating is that, you know, he should have been able to enjoy this Super Bowl, hopefully Super Bowl run for, for Green Bay and, and just even this next game and, and hopefully the Super Bowl after that, because his, you know, his fingerprints are all over the makings of this team. Um, you know the players, I'm sure, but Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, David Bakhtiari, Corey Lindsley, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Robert Tunyon, Lucas Patrick, uh, Kenny Clark, Kevin King, Mason Crosby, Dean Lowry, Lane Taylor, Tremont Williams, I guess, you know, Brian brought him back, but still a player he initially identified, Montrevious Adams. There is a ton of talent still on this team that is here because of Ted Thompson. And even if you want to go above and beyond that, a huge reason why Brian Gutekunst is on this team right now in the general manager position that he is, is because of Ted Thompson and his mentorship and bringing him up in the program and, and making him uh, or helping him throughout the process and still being a senior advisor to him uh, for a couple of years after uh, Ted Thompson stepped down. 
it, he he deserved to be able to see this team and this season come to completion. It's shitty that it happened this way. Um, certainly, all thoughts and prayers go out to to his family um, and the Packer family. And I know there's a lot of people in 1265 and around the league that were impacted by Ted. And it's 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 uh, it's unfortunate that it had to happen at this time. But this is this is this this team is. Ted's too. It's it's Brian's in a big way, but it's Ted's in a big way, and it, the the influence that he had on this current team and this current roster cannot be understated in any way, shape, or form. And the last thing that I wanted to mention in regards to to Ted is people ask me all the time, you know, what's your favorite moments as a Packer? Or, you know, as a Packer fan, um, what are your favorite moments? You know, growing up watching the team. And there's definitely a handful that I can point to, but definitely in my top two or top three is Ted Thompson, Brian, uh, Ted Thompson, Aaron Rodgers, and Mike McCarthy on the podium accepting the Super Bowl trophy. And we all know what happened when Ted, you know, obviously drafted Aaron and then traded away Brett. And it divided the fan base in a major way. There was so many Packer fans that decided to go and put and don purple Brett Favre jerseys and support the player rather than the team. Um, there were people that said that Ted Thompson had this huge ego and he only wanted the team and his, you know, his vision and wasn't going to, you know, keep any carryovers or anything like that. I remember the days when, you know, Mike McCarthy was deemed as, you know, a coach that wasn't going to be able to get Green Bay over the top. And, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers, because of the Favre trade, received death, death threats from people and was, um, the you know, a lot of fans were upset with him for it's the most stupid thing ever because he had absolutely nothing to do with it, but it still happened. And I had so much faith in those three people, in Rodgers and McCarthy and, and Thompson, and being able to get the job done. And this was before I covered the team in any sort of capacity that I do now. But I would tell people all the time that they were doing the, the things that they felt correct to help the franchise. And the thing that I want to touch base on Ted so much in regards to is the immediate reaction to that was that it was a selfish move by Ted and, and that it was, um, you know, obviously a lot of people thought it was a dumb move or a terrible move. And you have the awful interview question by a fan who said, you've got Aaron Rodgers who's going to bring you to the toilet bowl and Brett Favre who's going to bring you to the Super Bowl. Why do you, you know, why did you go and make this decision? That was when he drafted Rodgers um, and Ted just handled it like a professional that he was. But um, to what Ted did is stuck by his conviction in an absolute nightmare scenario. No GM wants to have to make that move where you trade away the face of the franchise, the face of the city, the, the face of the state of Wisconsin, Brett Favre. He was the face of the state of Wisconsin. No questions about it. There certainly was no Brewer or Buck at the time that was even in the conversation. Um, he was Wisconsin and Wisconsin sports. He epitomized, in a lot of ways, the state of Wisconsin. And it would have been the easier route, the easier path is to not select Aaron Rodgers, is to not trade away Brett Favre. The easier path is you've got Brett Favre and he wants to come back and play football. All right, you know, put the, tra the, the chin strap on and lace up the boots and, and play another season. And let's see what, if we can get another Super Bowl with Brett Favre. That's the easy decision. I was so inspired by his conviction to make the trade of Brett Favre in the toughest of scenarios, knowing that he was going to take endless amounts of hate from a huge chunk of the fan base, that there would be throngs of media showing up to interview and ask questions of everyone on the team, that it was going to it was going to be really ugly for a while because of that decision. But he stuck with his gut and his instinct that the best way forward was with Aaron Rodgers at quarterback. And yes, it was a messy divorce. And a lot of that was brutal to go through as a fan, but it was ultimately the right call. And to see them standing up on that podium and accepting that Super Bowl trophy, and specifically the three of them, I think Clay Matthews was up there for a while, obviously Mark Murphy, but to see Ted Thompson and Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers and overcoming that entire scenario and having that situation be right. I know Ted 
never said I told you so. I got to say to a lot of fans, I told you so, that they would be there because I'm much more of a jerk than Ted would ever be. But that was one of the greatest moments for me as a, as a Packer fan is seeing those three up there and, and what they did and, and Ted drafting Aaron and Aaron taking all the coaching and all the development and having the, the chip on his shoulder to get to that point of the, the great quarterback that he was, Mike developing Aaron and, and really uh, building the, the franchise in, a, in his image and uh, building a program as well. And to seeing them get to that point and accept that Super Bowl trophy, I still get goosebumps to this day. It was a picture I posted on Twitter yesterday because that's uh, when I think of Ted Thompson, that's the moment I'll think of. And, and his standing up for what he believed in. I know this isn't like a, you know, he's not a martyr or like, a, you know, made a major world decision. But in the sports world, that's about as big of a decision as you can possibly make. And it took a lot of stones and guts to make that move. And he did it because he thought it was the best for the, the franchise, even though he knew he was going to take the flack for it. And ultimately, his job security from that point forward was razor thin. If he gets that wrong, if he gets that wrong, his, his time as a GM is over. It's done. He, he never gets that back. He traded away the face of the franchise and then all of a sudden they go on a losing streak and they never get that back. It's, it's, it changes the course of the Packers forever. He gets fired. And again, his, his job security is nil at that point. But for it to come through and they win a Super Bowl and have, you know, go on and have multiple, you know, fantastic seasons and have opportunities to win other Super Bowls and get to NFC Championship games, he, he always tried to do what was best for the Packers. And that's how I'll remember him. And um, yeah, I hope, he, I hope uh, there's nothing but positive thoughts about Ted and what he did for this franchise because there's no way that the Packers are playing in the NFC Championship game this week if it weren't for Ted Thompson. So... Enjoy that game and, and say an extra thank you to Ted as you're as you're watching it because again his his fingerprints are all over that thing and uh, over the the foundation of this current franchise. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can check out my full grades uh, this week on PackerReport.com as you can every week. They have launched this morning, uh, Friday morning at 9 a.m. Um, but until next time, and as always, go Pack go.